Greetings! In MATLAB, all values in an array must be of the same data type. In this video, we will briefly discuss the meaning of data types and highlight the most important ones for this course. The three key data types are numeric, logical, and character. The symbol that MATLAB shows in the workspace next to a variable name indicates what data type that variable is. Those symbols are shown in this slide. Numeric is the type we have seen most often so far. This is how numbers are stored. In the next slide, we will see how there are many different subtypes under the category of numeric. Logical is the simplest data type of all. A logical variable can hold only one of two values, true or false. True is represented with a one and false with a zero. Last on this list is the character data type, abbreviated to char. This is how we represent text, which could be one or many, letters, spaces, or special symbols, like a question mark. String means almost the same thing as character array, with the difference being that character arrays have all their symbols separated in storage, but strings have the symbols lumped together, as in full words or sentences. To create a character array, use single quotes. This last note is an important one. The numeric two is different from the character two. Let's hop over to MATLAB for a demonstration. Notice that I have defined some variables already. When I did that, those variables were stored in the workspace. The symbol next to each variable shows the data type. Notice we see the numeric grid for A and D. We see the character array CH for B and E. And we see the logical check mark for C. Now to demonstrate the difference between numeric two and character two. First, I'll enter a plus four, which gives me the expected result of six. Now I'll enter b plus four. This gives a surprising answer of 54. What is going on here? The character two is actually represented by a string of eight bits based on the ASCII code. If we convert this binary code into decimal, we get 50. So when we add that 50 to four, we get 54. Don't worry about the details of ASCII or binary right now. The key point is that we gave MATLAB a strange request. We asked it to add a number to some text, so it did the best it could by converting the text into a number. This is akin to adding four to the word taco. In fact, let's try that out here and observe the result. The last thing I want to demonstrate is the fact that arrays all must be of the same data type. Let me show you what happens when we try to concatenate multiple data types. We see an error because this is not allowed. This tree shows all the data types available in MATLAB. Don't worry about memorizing this list. We'll learn about the other types when they become necessary. You can see the three we just discussed listed on the left. The other types include cell, structure, and function handle. Numeric is not actually a true data type, but a category of data types. The specific data types underneath numeric are shown here. Why is it important to specify different numeric types in computers? Because computers have limited memory. If we want to express a floating point decimal number, we have a smaller range of values we can represent as opposed to an integer number where we know we can stop at the decimal place and go no further. Int is short for integer. Uint is short for unsigned integer. Think of these as all positive numbers. The numbers afterward, 8, 16, 32, or 64, state how many bits are used in memory. If you want to reduce memory usage, you use a smaller number. Single and double are the data types for floating point numbers or numbers that can have a decimal portion. The double data type is the default when you store a number to a variable. This is nice because it is very precise to 16 significant figures in decimal, but each number does require a lot of memory. Since we'll be dealing with relatively small arrays in this course, we won't be using very much memory, so the double type is fine.